What's up, people? GNR TV, streaming done right. It has all the channels that you would want. You know, the regular channels, channels from out of state, pay-per-views, sports, the movie channels, porn. It has over 2,000 channels in general. Over 2,000 channels. $20 a month for two devices now. Not one, but two devices for 20 bucks, and you get all that amazing stuff. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, there's no sports right now. There's not really many pay-per-views. Well, guess what? There is sports because UFC is back. And there's pay-per-views because guess what? UFC is back, and the rest of the sports will be back eventually, and it's worth it. This app is freaking amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I've had it for a little over a year now. I'm never going to get rid of it, and I love it. I love it so much. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And enjoy the rest of the show. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Jason's mask. We are recording. So, Julianne, Hayden, how's it going? Good. Very well. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm excited for this. I love indie horror movies so i'm always excited like when i get the chance to interview anybody from this from the indie horror scene i it's awesome i'm just like for me it's like an honor like they're actually saying yeah to come on my show that's awesome well we were very honored to be asked oh we really appreciate whatever like you know everything that you do and whatever you can do to get people motivated and just happy and entertained right now it's Hugely appreciated. So I'm very, very grateful to be here today, too. I'm grateful. To As have am you both. I. I'm grateful to have you both. So I'm going to ask the generic question. Who or what got you into horror? <coughs> Excuse me. Who or what got you into horror? And what's like the first movie you remember that scared you as a kid, if any? Um, my babysitter actually got me into it at the age of three years old. Um. They went and rented Halloween four Ooh. and yeah, that was my first horror movie and it's very special to me still to this day. But the funny thing was at three years old, uh, the music, it scared me and they had to mute the movie to show me it was, it was fake. And then once they put it back on with the music, I was fine. <laughs> That's awesome though. <laughs> That is really, um, I think my first touch into horror was um, more like learning about urban legends, like cans coming out of the ground and Bloody Mary, things in like first and second grade. I mm-hmm. think the first horror movie that I remember ever watching was Jaws 3. And I had one of those big TVs with the wooden legs. And uh, it was in my room. I don't know how it ended up getting in my room. And I was watching it, and it's a very kind of a morbid story. I was watching it, and that night, my my grandfather that lived in the home actually passed away. And I remember looking at the window and seeing, you know, the lights and hearing my family out of the door. And I remember watching the film and still just kind of like redirecting. You know, I don't remember what my age was at that point, but I was very, very young. It was before third grade. Mm -hmm. And um, just focusing on what I was watching. So ever since then, I was just engulfed in this whole kind of universe. And ever since then, like every age and every year that would pass, I would just find something else that would draw me further in um, just feeling welcomed. And like it was something like a great outlet and something creative and, and, you know, very like warm for me. Yeah, that makes sense. (coughs) It's Yeah, I have to I have to agree with her. um, The horror community people ask me all the time, why do you love these movies? And I'm like, I just love them. I mean, I feel accepted because I think a lot of the horror fans 
were bullied in school and you know my outlook on it is we like to see the the person that's being bullied in the movie win at the end absolutely if that makes sense absolutely i always have with everything Me, i i got into it i'm not sure how old i was exactly between five and seven but um following like my older brother around my older cousins you know how it is if you're the youngest one there you want to do what all the older kids are doing because you think they're cool and horror was one of the things they would do on the weekends and um just i'd watch it with them scare the hell out of myself like to the point where i'd have to be walk to the bathroom and then walk back to but i'd always finish the movie and it just grew from there to what it is now for me as far as the podcast goes over the years and i just I always rooted for the bad guys. Like one, well, once I wasn't afraid of him anymore. I always rooted for the bad guys. Like Jason's my favorite slasher. I always rooted for Jason, and get mad at the end when he's, you know, when they defeat him for that movie. Just I don't know what it was that drew me. Well, I know what drew me to Friday the Thirteenth. It's USA Network as a kid growing up. Every Friday, oh god, movie, yeah, marathon all weekend. That's all I'm watching. And then when you got old enough to get the VHSs and you get to see the actual movie, like what was cut out, I'm just like. Oh, I'm hooked. I'm freaking hooked. But yeah, that was just, I freaking love it. I freaking love it. Yeah. Um, funny story with Friday the 13th. Um, when I was about five, my older sister and some friends of hers were watching. And I, I remember it, it, it just happened yesterday. They were watching Friday the 13th part two. Mm -hmm. And it was the scene where everything's calm and, you know, she's got the pitch for it. Cause they think somebody's at the door close to the end of the movie. And I was like, okay, it's all calm. They're playing calm music. And then Jason comes flying through that window. Oh. And for years after that, I refused to watch a Friday the 13th movie because my picture was not the hockey mask. It was that face. Oh, yeah. Because by that time, he was unmasked. Yep, yep. I know exactly what you're talking about. See, me, with it's funny you mentioned the window scene, because anytime Jason jumps through a window or throws someone through a window, that's one of my favorite things for the whole freaking... Like, I just look for. I get so excited. Like, it's the first time I've seen it every single time. <laughs> I, could, I could leave the room, miss it, rewind it just for that part. I don't know what it is about it. I just love it. And I laugh at it every single time, and it's just... It's awesome. It really is. I think for me as a little kid, um, mine was Michael Myers. And I, didn't, I don't even know why specifically, but um, I would be like playing dolls. I had this great big like five-story doll house that was usually taller than I was. Mm -hmm. um, and I just had this vision of him standing under like the, the lights outside, like the lamps, your street lamps outside. And that was something that really freaked me out as a kid is just imagining someone in a mask standing at a street lamp in front of my house. So it wasn't even like a specific movie moment or like a specific um, installment. It was just mm -hmm. like this, for some reason it resonated with me as just somebody, it was specifically like that character standing under the street lamp and just watching my house. And that was something that really freaked me out as a kid. But it really, it, it's Wait. funny how we all get scared of something. As a, I'll say as kids, you get scared of a movie or whatever. But it, instead of like deterring you, which I'm sure, I'm sure it has for some people. But for us horror fans, it's just like, wait a second. I want, I want to see the, more of this now. Yeah, it's like a roller coaster ride. You know, you, it's that adrenaline. So true. So true. It, it is that adrenaline rush. And then it's just the cool scenes. Are like that, now that I'm older. And obviously, I know I knew it was fake for years, but now that I'm older, you know it's fake. And then it's like, I get to talk to awesome people like you guys and special effects artists. And I don't know what it takes to say, I use this example all the time, like say making a head, say it takes 20 hours to make that head and like five minutes to destroy it. I'm like, that's that to me, that amazes me. I'm, me personally, I feel like, I know I don't have the talent to make that, but I'm like, if I had the talent to make that, I'd be so upset. It would be hard for me to destroy it. Like it took me all this time to do this. But I get the creative portion of it in the movie because the art of it and how it makes the movie look with the practical effects yeah. and special effects, which all of us horror fans love. It's what you put into it, for sure. I think one of my favorite moments as a kid getting into horror that really hooked me was 
my first sleepover with the girls. We're watching the scary movies, watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I don't even remember what else we watched. But um, I was one of the girls, and I was always picked on. And uh, I was one of the girls that at that, it was a turning point for me where I was the one staying up with the shaving cream. I was the one that <laughs> when we did the cheerleader pyramid the next day, stepped into dog poo. It was like, well, I'm the smallest because I was picked on for being skinny and everything. So I'm like, well, put me at the top of the pyramid after I stepped in dog poo so that I just, you know, got my, you know, yeah. vengeance on these girls and be like, well, you know, this is my day now. Like, I, you know, these are my movies. I'm not scared. I'm having a good time. And it made me feel mm -hmm. really happy. <laughs> I get that. I get that. I remember um, speaking of the Friday the 13th franchise, when it first came out on DVD, I went and got it. And my one brother, we went, we went to the mall, got it, came home, went to the store. There was like a corner store right up the street. Got some snacks, got some like energy drinks, some candy and chips or whatever. <coughs> I went to the store, actually. We started watching the movies. I was like, I'll be right back. I went to the store. They gave me a couple of dollars or whatever, went to the store, grabbed it. And like, you can go right, right through my backyard and come right out, come right back to go to the store. And on my way back, he jumps out from behind a tree and grabs me, scared the hell out of me. And every, he was like, he just, he timed it so perfect. He was like, like, he was just like, I know how long it took. He was like, I know how long it's going to take you to get there and get back. I was like, you know how funny it would have been, though? Because I, I cut through the yard. I could have went around the front door, but I cut through the yard. I was like, what would you have done if I went through the front door? <laughs> like, I was like an idiot. <laughs> Staying out there waiting for you all that time. But that, that's like a very memorable moment for me. No, never. Well, I think, that's, I think that's one thing us horror fans really love to do is we love to try to get one up on each other. We love to try to scare the other one. Yes. Yeah, you're so um, and we all have fun in it. I mean, it's just all fun and games. It really is. And I don't mean to do it. Like, I would scare my wife, and I don't do it on purpose. I'll say nine times out of ten, I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> and she would always just get mad. Like, I'm like, I just walked in the room, and you jumped because I don't know. <laughs> I can't help that. I just – and she was like, well, what? Because I, I walk real quiet, and I've always – I don't do it to scare anybody. I just walk quiet. No matter what I'm wearing, I can have boots on barefoot i just walk quiet and i i i can't i don't know <laughs> i can't be blamed for that i'm not a heavy stepper but it's, i think it's, it's great that everybody has um if you have a love for the community you just have a love um mm -hmm. there aren't romantic comedy conventions there you know there's no love for anything like this i mean it, it, you have passion for it on so many levels and I think everyone who's an artist in it or you're, you know, just promoting it or you're a fan or however you're involved, like you're all family and everything that you do is because it means something to you as a kid, as an adult, like whatever you do, you're just engulfed in it because it's part of you. And that's, it's something very special that sets all of us apart with this community. I agree. I agree. Percent. Um, oh, go ahead. Uh, my first convention, I had wanted to do it for years. And I remember walking into my first convention, and it was actually a Days of the Dead, Julian. Oh, um, my God. <laughs> yeah. My very first convention, convention was a Days of the Dead in Atlanta. Amazing. Because I'm in Alabama. So um, I remember walking in, and for me, yes, I got to meet the celebrities that – I grew up watching like Adrian King and Heather Langenkamp, but for me, it was meeting the people in the interim and talking to them and just sharing the love of it. That's the fun of the conventions to me. I feel the same way. I feel like it's, it's really important, um, especially at these conventions um, that everybody gets to spend time together and that, they're supporting everybody on every level, like whether you're an independent filmmaker, you're an actor, you're just, you know, everything that you do, you're a vendor, you're a fan, you're an enthusiast, you love everything, you're just coming in because you're, it, it makes you feel strong, you're happy, you love Halloween, everything that you do, you're a guest, you're a director, you're a promoter, like everything that you do on every level. Um, I think that every time that we get the chance to spend this time together, you know, like we are right now, mm -hmm. um, especially right now, virtually it's so important right now because we don't have any of these other outlets. So what you're doing right now 
is so important to the community because we don't have that outlet right now. And it means so much to people. It really, it, it gets us to connect. It gets us to have outlets and it also gets us to um, find ourselves and a path for what we want to do personally. Oh, wow. Thank you. I never even thought about it like that. I just. It's, uh, 100%. <laughs> that's what I thought when I came on. Here. Oh yeah. I appreciate that. Though. And a uh, funny story from this past days of the dead in Atlanta, this past, uh, it was in February, wasn't it, Julianne? Yes, it was. I was there. Um, funny story. I don't know if you know. I know Julianne knows. Tamar, Tamar Glenn, Felissa Rose are part of this film. And I've known Felissa for a long time. Uh, she's amazing. And Absolutely. Uh, she, is, she is amazing. If you ever get a chance to meet Felissa, you've got to meet her. But I was standing in line to go say hey to Felissa, and a guy come up, and his name is Rick. He owns 13X Studios, mm -hmm. and he makes masks. Well, me and him started talking in the interim, waiting to see Felissa, because he had worked with Felissa and Tamara on Terrifier 2. Mm -hmm. And... So this project, you know, we talked, and it was really funny. We went our separate ways, and then this project came about, this movie and casting, and Tamara came to me, and she said, I have this really great guy who makes masks. And it was very important to me with this movie to have a mask that nobody's seen before. So I was like, okay, get me in contact with him. Long story short, it ended up being the guy I met awesome. in the line, Rick. That's awesome. And that's how, I mean, we all were talking about it, the fact that three weeks prior we were um, just standing in a line at a convention, wow. and <laughs> now we're all working together. That's so cool. I love that. <laughs> so much I, I i especially love it because it was days of the dead obviously but um i mean that just that's proof right there that like it's so important for us to all connect however we can um especially creatively and you don't know who you're gonna run into because on every level again like the, this is the most important thing to people it, it means so much to them on levels that we can't understand whether it's personal family you know whatever it is that got them you know, being so entwined with this culture, it's, it's something that you can't really explain unless you're part of it. It's a very big situation, a very big scale um, that makes people feel really welcome, really positive and really empowered. And stories like that are everything. And that's exactly why we're all here and why we watch these films, why we're part of them, exactly. why, we do, why we support them. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I actually got, I met Felissa Rose quite a few times. She's so freaking awesome. So nice. Oh, so much. I, I love her. Yeah. I can't be like, I, I just love her. No, I love her so much. I love her so much. Yeah, she, She's so good to the fans. That's actually like one of my, one of my like dream people to get on here is her and Kane Hodder. I only met Kane one time, but hilarious guy. And Felissa Great. was so nice. Met, like I said, I met her a few times. And um, I remember the first time me and my brother met her. It was the first time we went to a con ever. First horror convention. And I, I, at the time, I think I only seen Sleepaway Camp once. And he's seen it plenty of times. Like, he's seen it when he was a kid and all that stuff. And he wanted to meet her bad. And we looked like stalkers because <laughs> he was nervous to meet her. So we walked, we walked through the whole con, get, you know, getting other autographs, getting other things. And then we got all the autographs we needed, except for hers at the time. So we, we walked past our table, no exagger no exaggeration, at least like five or six times. And the last time I was like, look, man, I was like, man up. We're going in that line right now and getting this autograph. I was like, we look like creeps just walking around. We walk, like, we walk, like, <laughs> doing laughs, doing laughs. Doing, doing laughs. laughs. And we would do laughs like down her row and then go around the whole con, down her row, go around the other way. I'm like, right. come on, man. This, this is ridiculous. Let's just stop and get the autograph. And she was just so freaking nice. She gives you a big hug, smiling, laughing. And she'll talk to you as long, if, like if her line if there's nobody in her line, she'll sit there and talk to you the whole time you're there. She's not gonna like 
sign your autograph and then kind of push you away. She loves fans there. And I just, I love that. That's another thing with yeah. her and people like Tamara. It's like these people really love being there and they really support people that are fans, people that are newcomers, people that, you know, they just want to make people happy. They're very welcoming. They're very supportive. Um, they'll show up at the after parties. They'll show up after hours to hang out, talk to you, take mm -hmm. selfies. They want you to feel welcome because they genuinely care about people. And that's another thing that sets um, some of our producers and our cast apart is um, there are people on this movie specifically that really want to give back and contribute to the community and make something um, that's personal to people and, and, you know, gives back that feeling of nostalgia and why you're here, why you first fell in love with this community and uh, make you feel like you're right there as, as part of it. You're not just, you know, someone giving like money to watch. You're, you're actually yeah. part of this. It's for you. It's for you. Well, that that's one thing I love about the indie scene. Like, what the I love the indie go go stuff because it gives us fans a part of something. Like, even if you only throw in five ten bucks to get your name in the credits, you're still a part of it. You get to get the Blu-ray or DVD or whatever whatever it is you want from one of the perks that you can get, which I think is awesome. And I th so I'm not saying I won't go out and buy a, a horror movie from Walmart or wherever the case may be because I'm still gonna do that. But it just means more when you get to back that movie. You get because it's like you you help that movie come out for one, and then you get something from that that not everybody gets to get. If if it, say there's no dis say there's no distribution after the uh, Indiegogo, or it's not for a while, you're one of the first people to get that you know that movie that shirt that whatever, and it, it does mean a lot to us. Like I said, it means a lot to us fans. It makes you feel like you're a part of something which you are, which makes you want to see it more. It makes you want to see it succeed more. You want to have it get out more, share it more, promote it more and all that good stuff because you're actually a part of it. And you guys actually do care about not, I'm not saying the big name actors and actresses and directors don't, but you guys actually really do have a personal connection with fans. You guys really care about the fans, which again means the world to us. Cause it's like, it's kind of like just going and buying a movie from Walmart. You're just spending your money. Like you were saying a minute ago, you're just spending your money and that's, then you're just going to watch it. Yeah. You enjoy it, but stuff like this, you get like that one-on-one -on -one connection, that one-on-one -on -one personal connection. I love it. That's probably another reason why I do this freaking show now. Oh, thank you. Such a, it, it just drives me more besides doing the reviews, which I love, like everything that I do about the podcast, I just You'll be part of it. You want like, we're all here to be part of something. I mean, I mean, that's, exactly. I think that's the thing apart is this community are not, we're not just fans. Like we're not just watching a film for actors. We're not just watching a film. Like we want to be part of, this whole experience. That's why I'm here. I, I do these films because I want to be a part of it. I want the experience. I want to spend time with um, other actors. I want the whole, like I want to wake up and, you know, spend a week or on set or just go to location and just, you know, have that film family for that time. You want the experience for sure. Definitely. Exactly. And, you know, getting to play around in fake blood and, you know, getting chased and all that's just, icing on top of the cake i think absolutely absolutely that would be fun, would be, would be fun. <laughs> i haven't i haven't got to do that but if there's ever i think that's one thing i would like to do maybe one of these days like people have always said you should try to be in, in something you in, have to you have to but you should be for oh, sure yeah i think if it's i mean it's, it's one of those things like say if my you know if everything's good at home finances are right so if i had to travel somewhere unless it's you know within my region which there's nothing really in my region, but if I had to travel some, and all that good stuff, even just a small role, I don't care. I, it's it's something I, I have to do. It's happening. It's all I love happening. horror. I love horror so much. I'm like, why? Hey, Aaron, you were in the movie for six seconds. Hey, look, that was six seconds longer than you. <laughs> right? <laughs> it, Thank you. It's just and, uh, so cool. And then, again, it's, I'm not going to say it would be easy, but it'd be easier to be able to do something like that with the indie scene now that the indie scene is so huge now compared to Hollywood, for example. Well, you know, um, one of the perks we have offered is, you know, a chance for the fans to be in the movie, have their picture in the movie. I did see um, that. On, on wanted posters. And since this is a reunion type movie, um, a yearbook. Yeah. 
We're giving the fans the chance to be former classmates of ours. And we're giving the fans the chance to be on the suspect posters. And um, starting tomorrow, this was really important to me. Starting tomorrow, we're going to drop a new perk, and I can't say what it is yet, but $3 of that donation is going to go to the Coronavirus Foundation. That's awesome. That's amazing. That's really that awesome. And I'm I'm gonna see how my ducats are tomorrow. My money this weekend, and I'm I'm getting that perk for the to be have my face in the movie at the, at least. That's a start. <laughs> That'll be a yeah, start. A lot of a lot of people like that perk. Yeah, I, I I love it. I love that perk. And then I know I'm gonna get the blue. Ripley, Ripley, stop it. Because that's what sorry, I'm sorry, my dogs. Oh, sorry. that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. She's digging but up that was so one fun. thing. Of, <laughs> that was one thing that was really important to me with this movie is to include the fans. Um, this is a really a passion project for me. Uh, Julianne's read the script. She knows this is not your typical, I would say, women running through the woods slasher film. <laughs> Which is amazing just, to me. Yeah, um, it's it's an homage to the 90s slasher films that we grew up on, Scream, and I Know What You Did Last Summer. But I really want these characters to be characters that you care about, mm -hmm. that are real. So when something does happen, you're devastated that much more that this character's gone. Okay. And I think that's one thing that sets this movie apart. Wouldn't you say, Julianne? I do completely. I think that these characters, um, again, all of our cast, I feel, are very embedded in their roles. I think that they're going to bring something very emotional to each character that people are going to gravitate towards. And also it's going to be something that they're going to be attracted to that's going to um, speak to them. I, that's something that, again, with this film specifically resonates with me is that there's a lot of heart. There's a lot of backstory. There's a lot of, of, of culture there and a lot of people that don't normally get a voice. You know, you get like your, your hot people running through the woods and they're there and what's going on. And that's great. It's fun. It's great entertainment. But I think a lot of these characters um, are very more developed than maybe we're used to. And I think that they, they have more of a voice and more of a backstory than um, maybe a lot of films provide, which I think is amazing. Like, I really think that it's important. I want to care. I want to feel like these are my friends. I want to feel like they're people that I grew up with. And I personally feel after reading the first draft and then getting as far as I am into the second draft, I'm not all the way full with it, but I've gotten halfway through because I want to absorb it. And I feel already that, I know these people, but like, they're my friends. They're my family. They're people that I grew up with. They're people that I went to school with. They're people that are in my community that if they're having a problem, something's wrong. And I've gotten to know, again, virtually some of these people. Um, and I know for a fact that they're going to bring so much emotion and pain and laughter and love into what they're bringing on the screen for this film. But it's really going to mean a lot to people when they watch it. It's going to be important. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what, what can you, um, what are you guys allowed to discuss about the movie? Like, what can you tell? I'll let him lead. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, of course, I'm sure, you know, uh, Tamar, Tamara is, I want to call her Tamara. I don't know why. Tamara Glenn from Halloween five, um, and Felissa Rose and then Maximo Sorrento. I can never pronounce his name, last name, right. He's the brother of Mike, the situation from um, oh, Jersey, Jersey Shore. Shore, but he was also in Sleepaway Camp. Um, they all came on board. Tamara was the first one, actually, that came on board and agreed to produce this film. That's awesome. Before even seeing a script, <clears throat> I, I told her the basic plot line, mm -hmm. and she agreed to come on, and it was just amazing to me to say, okay, I have Tamara Glenn wanting to produce this film. Um, 
the simple backstory, because I don't want to give too much away, is we follow the <laughs> uh, we follow the character of Riley Connor, who has not returned to his hometown in nine years. Oh. His father passed away, and um, he did not deal with that very well. And a friend of our group is murdered. And this brings Riley back to town. And once Riley gets back to town, all hell breaks loose. And um, then we get thrown into this mix of who's trying to do this? Who would have a grudge against us? Because all of us have been friends at junior high. Um, So we're really thrown into this mix. And then there's that emotion there where at one point, I mean, I think Julianne knows what scene I'm talking about. We're all arguing with each other um, because we're that worked up and we just don't know what's going on and why this is happening. Like I said, this is very much in the vein of Scream and I Know What You Did Last Summer. And then, you know, it was really, I will give this away. It was really important for me to have an opening similar to Scream, Mm -hmm. um, because when Scream come out, I remember sitting in the movie theater, and if you look at all the promotion stuff at that time, it was Drew Barrymore, Drew Barrymore, Drew Barrymore. So I remember sitting in the movie theater, and 10 minutes into the film, Drew Barrymore was dead. She was gone. And I remember thinking, they just killed off America's sweetheart. We have no idea what we're in for. True. Very true. And that was a changing point, I really think, in horror because there for, you know, a little bit in the 90s, stuff was going straight to video and the slasher craze kind of went down and then Scream came out and it went back up. And um, that's what I wanted to do with this film was, you know, a horror thriller that you are guessing who is doing this. And what I can give away is because we are all, even me as the director and writer, all sworn to secrecy. (laughs) Um, We've all signed NDAs. So what I can give away is it's going to be a thrill ride. It's going to be, uh, like Julianne said, this is going to resonate with people Every character will resonate with people in some sort of way. They will see themselves in that character. Um, And it's just, it's going to be a really fun film. And I, you know, we even reference, you know, as Scream referenced Halloween and, you know, those horror movies, we reference the 90s horror movies. Oh, nice. <clears throat> nice. That's in that's that sounds interesting. I I can't wait. I'm always, I'm one of those people like I can't wait to see a freaking trailer and then from the trailer I'm like, all right, I can't wait for this movie to come out. These guys gotta hurry up. But I, I know it takes more than Well, just- we may have some things behind the scenes that we can do for you guys. We I'm like not saying too too much, but we are trying behind the scenes because yes. we know the state of everything. We want to bring some things to you guys and maybe give you some sort of taste um, while you're at home. What we can do from our homes, um, because we understand this camaraderie. So we are going to try to bring you something very special um, home to home. But that's all I can say. Uh, Yeah, we're all working on that behind the scenes uh, to stay in contact with the fans and keep them excited about this film. We're all working on that, and um, here comes my scary will, wind again, guys. Sorry if it gets crazy. <laughs> I got working uh, I for winds you. out here. It's so weird. Wind, 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 scary wind. <laughs> out there in Vegas. Yeah, you never. Oh, she's scared of the wind. No, this wind is like vicious. It's like hurricane force winds we get out here. It's so weird. And the sky just went gray. So if all of a sudden things start blowing around, I'm not the Wicked Witch of the West, I promise. <laughs> You're not going to just start playing around? That's my sister. 
go on. No, but you know how cool that would be for the video to <laughs> start flying around in the room in the background? Yeah. Da, 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 da. Flying around. Toto! That would be so amazing. It would be. Be a hell of a promotion for your movie, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. It would be. So, so um... Oh, go ahead. Or go ahead. No, you you go ahead. You're the host. Well, no, you you had something to say. I'll remember my question. You can go ahead and finish with your statement. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, um, we loved the fact, I personally love the fact that we got Tamara and Max and Felissa also in the film. Uh, they're going to bring something different to the film too, something that you really haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. I really think... I have to really say Tamara is. Mm -hmm. Tamara Tamara has a <laughs> I don't want to give too much away. She has an amazing role in the film, I'd say. Especially towards the end of the film. Oh. Absolutely. Oh man, I can't wait. I already Absolute, can't wait. Absolutely. But my question for both of you is like what got you into doing movies? for any type of whatever you do for the movie, whether you're in movies, directing, producing, what got you to want to do that? Was it something that you always want to do as a kid or was it just like later in life you decided you wanted to try it out? Well, um, for me, I started acting and theater um, when I was a teenager. Um, and it was funny because when I was a kid and my mom mentioned this several times, I could watch a movie one or two times and I could quote like the entire movie. It's just something that came natural to me. And uh, with this film, the way it all came about was I had been thinking about it for a while. I, I wanted it to be right. And I wanted it to be the right time. Mm -hmm. And I think right now it is the right time mm -hmm. for this type of film. Um, so at the convention days of the dead um i went to an independent horror filmmaker panel with michael bean and his wife jennifer and they really inspired me when they were talking about it they were like if you want to make a film go make a film so that's how this all started um the yes. script went out the script got wrote finally like that inspired me to go home and finish the script and um we created the group and created the Facebook page. And with one day, I was getting all these great actors, Julianne for one, and I, I don't even know how these people found out about it, wanting to audition. And um, I was like, wow. And I mean, I had some really great audition, really great auditions that just amazed me. And um, it was hard picking some of these cast members because, you know, when you write a script, you have that vision in your head of who these characters are. Mm -hmm. So when, I mean, when Julianne came along and I'll let you tell him a little bit about your character, Julianne, yeah. when she came along um, and I saw her audition. I, I knew it. I was like, that's, that's Paige. Nobody else has this part. Um, she just blew it out of the water. And she was exactly who I, she had the look I had envisioned for that part. That's awesome. Well, <clears throat> I think um, when I auditioned, I, I, like, obviously I had no idea um, who I was going to be until I got the sides. And, um, when I got them, I was really automatically attracted to this character because she's a, you know, like a social media influencer. Like, um, she's got presence. She has a little bit of like a bossy kind of commanding vibe, but it gets deeper into the, um, sense with her friends mm -hmm. where that's what she projects. And I, I mean, I do that. I, I go on social media. It takes a lot for me. I'm a very kind, very supportive person. So it takes a lot for me to get on social media and be like doing this right now and be like, Hey everybody, listen to me. <laughs> it's very hard, especially um, coming from me personally as who I am. So I felt very attracted to this character because 
also you see she is like a strong point for her friends. She's someone that they gravitate towards. They look to for authority. They look to for help. Maybe like, um, you know, what do we do next? Maybe some strength, you know, like a, like a, a point of building themselves up and, and like a leader, kind of like a leadership role. Um, <clears throat> but so when you first meet her, she seems sassy and like, Oh God, what is she doing? Like, she's just, speaking and doing this and that but you see like very quickly that people start to look up to her and why do the friends look up to her who would look up to her why and then you start to see like the dynamic between her and these other characters and kind of learn her backstory and i thought it was very layered i thought it was something that made her very substantial and made her seem like you know somebody that was doing this because she really was rooting for other people and wanting to help them and bring them up, pull them up, get them through difficult situations. So she's somebody, when you're going through a hard time, you would really want to be there helping you and, and giving you that um, good energy. And that's what I love about Paige so much. Yeah, um, I will say she, and I know Julianne's gonna blow it out of the water. She has two really, really, amazing scenes and one is very emotional and that's all i can say about that um but I she's gonna blow it out of the water like, oh God. i'm gonna cry i'm gonna be legitimately crying very hard um <laughs> I, I love this like i love when i get to sit with you guys and talk about this kind of stuff but i feel teased at the same time because you guys are like okay this is gonna be an epic part right here but i can't tell you <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yep. But I, I like that though because it makes you it makes you really want to see it more and see this project more because you're saying like little bits and pieces and then you got to see you know when the movie comes out you'll see. We're ready. Well, We're I ready would, to bring this. Oh yes, and I would say you know these characters are as I said earlier they're all very different in their own way. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say they're kind of like the. I mean, Julianne could, uh, she can, I don't know if she'll agree with me on this, but kind of like the breakfast club in a way. Of oh, yeah, that, totally. Um, they all come from different backgrounds, and but they've all come together. They've grown together, and Julianne is, uh, Paige is definitely one of the characters that is kind of the leader of the group. Um, there's a couple of other characters, but it, there's two more that kind of lead the group that have been in the group the longest. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't want to call us, I mean, you could call us the losers club too, if you wanted to, but no shame I mean, not. not at all. Yeah. I, there was, there's one scene in the film that was very important when I was writing it, uh, that when they're all reunited before everything starts going really crazy and really bad, they're all sitting around a campfire, joking, having drinks. And this is the first time they've been together in nine years. And then it takes a turn. <laughs> Within 24 hours, it takes a turn that... I mean, it puts us all, it puts all the characters in turmoil. None of Which us know so what's going sad. on. It's just so sad. It's like all these people are just getting reunited and, and they are just reconnecting with what each other meant to them. And then all of a sudden it, they're snapped back, which I love that. I love this so much about this script is you get out of the story for a minute. It's like they're brought there by like Discord. And then all of a sudden they just connect and they love each other and they remember why they cared about each other. And all of a sudden they're just like ripped apart right all over again. Very mm -hmm. dramatic. Very, yeah, very heartfelt and dramatic. I can't wait. I really can't wait. I just, again, I, I love seeing everybody's work when it comes to these indie movies. And it's, it's, it's like you're seeing somebody's dreams come true when they get these out, when they get these, when you got, when you guys get these type of projects out. And I just, I love seeing it. I don't know. I don't know what else. I really don't know what else to say. It's I'm just like, oh, this is so cool because it's like, this is we regular love people. It too. This is we regular were people. Doing it right oh now. yeah. Say that again. Um, it. Oh yeah. 
because of this stuff going on, Corona. Yeah, we wish we're doing it right now, but we are. We're, we're talking about it. we're bringing it back to life and uh, keeping it that breath in there right now, which yeah, is really and I, so important. I can say from my side and the producer side, we are working nonstop pre-production. So once we can, and it's safe for the everyone involved to start mm -hmm. filming, mm -hmm. we can jump right into it. Absolutely. Um, because our plan, see, originally the plan was we were going to shoot this summer. Well, then this came along and nobody knows what's going to happen with this. <clears throat> so we, I, as the director, had to step back and look at what was best for my cast and what was best to, for the production. So I decided we're going to push this back. We'll still work pre-production, mm -hmm. but the safest thing for the cast right now is to wait to film. And um, it will still be filmed this year, but it just got pushed back. Okay. That's, <clears throat> it's understandable though. I mean, but you're still working, you're still doing something. So it, that helps. That yeah, we're here. We and, are here and we're, yeah. we're going to continue to be here. We're going to continue to be here every week. Anytime wants to talk, you know, I wants to like message us privately, do live videos, funny things, just little like group posts and stuff. We, mm -hmm. we just want people to know that we're an outlet. We're like your, your friend. We're here. If you want to talk, it could be about anything. You want to talk about a movie that you want to watch. You want recommendations. We just want you to know that this is going to be another outlet for you. And we're here. We're on, we're all equal right now. We're like, we're literally all just trying to find our bearings and, and be rooted in something that we really love that gives us comfort right now. For sure. I agree with you. Exactly. And I'm going to let you guys both know right now, if you ever want to come on again, just shoot me an email or whatever, get a hold of me and come right back on and talk to oh, me. Oh yeah. We would love that. <laughs> Thank you. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, that's one of those real invites. Like, you know, some people will give you that fake and like, Hey, come over whenever you want, but they're lying about it. They're, they're just saying it to be nice. Like, I really do mean that if you want to come on again, we could do film night. We could literally like, we could do like a 90s slasher film night or something really fun. Yeah. We, totally were, we were talking so about that. So fun. They know to that. That's um, I will say, and I wanted to make sure the fans listening know this. Um, we understand right now what's going on in the world and you know the devastation that's going on. And with the Indiegogo, we understand that you may not be able to donate right now. Mm -hmm. And we did want the fans to know, and I put it in the official statement, that we will have another Indiegogo with the same perk so they don't feel like they're going to miss out because that's not what we want. We want the fans not to miss out. That's like so what you were saying be at the beginning of being like, you want to feel a part of things. And one of your favorite things is feeling like there are perks that involve you in the film. We don't want people to feel like they're going to miss out on being involved in the film. Like we're not, we're all like on the same level. Like we all want to yeah. still be involved in the film. So we're going to have options for you guys to still be you know, if not more than involved than we are to stay along, keeping this live for everybody involved for sure. And one thing I do try yeah. to tell other horror fans is because we all understand there's, you know, money's tight, whether it's this going on or just in general, if, if you're a fan of these indie horror films, if you're a fan of indie horror in general, if you can't afford to back it, just hit the share button a couple of times. Even if you do it once or twice a day, because it yeah. helps them out a ton and it just gets it out there more and one day you one day you will be able to get the movie i will say that but it's just like just it'll get the movie out for us all if you can just hit the share button so it's as simple as that because all of us share a bunch of stupid memes all day every day i'm guilty of it but oh me that's how i get by like right now i'm living i'm living for memes that's the only thing keeping me like even engaged right now <laughs> i'm guilty as heck you yeah, know i have been Honestly, and I think Julianne is too, because I've seen some of her Facebook posts. I've been going back and watching older um, horror movies. And oh, just, absolutely. Yeah. 
you know, because we have nothing else to do right now. We're all trapped, basically. We need to do more film and, nights. We should do more, like, live film nights. We should organize they, more, like, you know, people together, like, Skype film nights. I did it for one of my girlfriend's birthdays. It's so fun. We should, like, recommend some movies. Even if you're not live together, like, post something and comment back and forth. We can still do that. I agree. Especially yeah. Nice Oh yeah. I mean, we we may even do that. That's a good idea, Julian. We may is, even yeah. do a a live one in um, the group. I think. We could so do everybody could be involved for sure. That would be amazing. We could do the screen movie. We could do like you know some of the sequels. We could do anything, and we could t like tag everybody, do some live, but also have some video here and there. That'd be mm -hmm. super fun. And it'd be keeping like people like super, you know, entertained and feeling connected. I would I for I'm there. I'm there. Right. Yeah, now. I think it's a great idea. Keep people interacting and everything and the horror just kind of moving along. And I would even say just to support other indie movies, maybe some of the ones that are on YouTube. Yeah. Watch those together as well. Cause that, you know, gets the ball keeps the ball rolling with those. And nobody's gonna complain, like as far as copy all that copyright crap, but Again, I love yeah. I love that idea. I love that idea. Exactly. And a lot I do know a lot of directors, especially in the indie scene, are releasing their movies for people to watch right now. Yeah. Um I do know that that they are doing that and as a way of giving back. But the way I look at it is, you know, We've got to do something like that, or we're all gonna just go crazy. Oh yeah, for real. Oh. Yeah, I agree. You I know, agree. if you think, and that was one of the things with this film that I wanted to do, and unfortunately, we don't. Of course, we don't have it made yet. But um, one of the things with this film that was really important to me because if you go back and you watch the original Friday the 13th or you watch the original Halloween, both of those were very low budget films. Mm -hmm. The people in those movies, nobody knew at the time. And of course they took off. If this film takes off, that's great. But, um, you know, what I wanted was a group of us all to come together film this movie, have fun, and at the end of the day, you say, hey, we did that. We spent this time together, and we had a blast doing it. I can't wait. I really I really cannot. That's my favorite part is being with the group, being with the group and actually getting to, you know, spend that time, again, like wake up, breathe, go to sleep. Everybody's having this connection. I love it my favorite part that total film family connection i i just love exactly. it about this horror stuff in general it's just again i love that i get to interview people like you two and just be more connected with these movies because you guys come on my show we talk about your movies and all that and other random horror things but it, it gives me an opportunity to feel a little bit more connected into this into this whole horror family love that I'm sorry if I'm getting kind yeah. of grayed out. Like we're getting some, we're uh, we're about to get some bad weather. I can see. So if I get like grayed out, that's what's happening. Okay, you're good right now though, but okay. I get it. But um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Don't you hate it when that happens? Yeah, it's my um, weather. It just put a cloud over you too. Yeah. Um, I'll ask you guys what for y'all is the most, I guess, big stream or, you know, Hollywood horror film anticipated for the year. Candyman for me. I love, <laughs> um, I love Jordan Peele's direction on things. I like his, I like his mind and can I just, me and my brother just reviewed Candyman last week and we were both agreed on well, Candyman. It, it's a slasher movie in a sense, but for that movie, I'm not saying you're not watching it for the kills, but you're more watching that, that horror movie for the story more than anything. Exactly. Like, kills in it. But I'm hoping, cause it's supposed to be like a sequel or spiritual sequel or something. I'm, I'm hoping, I know it's connected with the original. 
I'm hoping that yes. to that script as far as like there could be three or four kills in it, some cool kills, cool, but that really good deep story is what I really, really want from that movie. That's like something I'm really excited for. And I just, it's, it's one of those things where I'm like, I, I try not to have expectations, high expectations for movies, but this is one of them. I just, I can't help it. <laughs> I tried my best what? to calm myself down. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm, th- I'm going all out. I'm going to be excited for it. And it's either going to be a, a hard hit for me, like great, or just a rough miss where I'm just going to be like, Oh man, just sad. <laughs> But what about you? Um, for me, and that's because I'm a huge fan, uh, it's actually Halloween Kills. Okay. Um, I cannot wait to see one. If you've seen the last one they did, I want to know how he got out of there. <laughs> I, but, have, um, I have my theory on that, but I'll let you guys finish what you have to say for But for me, and I have heard the reviews from the early test screening about how great this is. And that really does not happen in test screenings. Um, majority of the reviews were very positive. Uh, for me, like I said, Halloween's very special to me, but for me, it's that story with Lori Strode and her family and that generational, what, from 1978 what it did to Lori Mm. and how it played out on her family all these years and now they're thrown into the mix they see she was not kidding so um i'm really excited for halloween kills this year how about you julianne what are you excited for this year what movie i have to say candy man just because um I really wanted to go uh, with a lot of the remakes, reimaginings, you know, all of it. You always have this look at it like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Mm-hmm. But when I saw that first trailer, I watched it probably like 20 times in a row, over and over and over again. And there's things about it that I know personally that I'm excited for that I can't spell. And I'm like really in love with this because. Um, I talked about it earlier on another um, conversation I was having with um, films where they can improve on something or they can add to something Mm -hmm. where um, something that us fans would be like, oh my God, we really appreciate this. It's not, you know, attack on the original, but you actually did do what you're supposed to do with a reimagining or a remake or a re, you know, whatever you're doing. Yeah. Um, and for this one, I was stoked. And things I've heard behind the scenes, I'm so stoked for this movie. And yeah, I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually really, really excited for this for the for the new Candyman. Um, and yeah, at first I, of course, I was like, ah, um, like I have Candyman here, and he says, you know what? I think you guys should go see it. It's gonna be really fun. It's funny you say that. Well, I changed my setup the other day, so my green screen's a little wider. But he's like, right. On my shelf over here, he's like right behind the screen, right here. Because when I was doing Candyman, they just happened to be here. It was him and Doug Bradley. They're just kind of chilling, and I was like, "Oh well, you guys can get in on this." And he's like, "Okay, well, I think that you guys should watch it. It's going to be really not far from me either. Look at that. Be awesome. It's and the Candyman awesome. thing. I just don't want to grab it. I don't want to ruin the screen. I think it's going to well, be awesome. Know. It's going to be so much fun. I do too. Yeah. I agree with Julianne on a lot of these fans when it comes to these remakes and reimaginings. They're like she said, they're like, why are they doing this? But everyone that I see, I try my best to go in with an open mind (laughs) and not think about the original movies. But the funny thing about Candyman is when that movie first came out, uh, I remember, you know, Saturday night going to the video stores. My parents rented it, and we watched it. And my dad waited for the right moment because all of us kids were on a pa- uh, pallet on the floor, mm-hmm. and um, we wait. He waited for the right moment and jumped on top of all of us. <laughs> And it scared oh the hell out of us. That's so cool. What a so, uh, <laughs> That's I mean, for many, 
for many years after that, I was terrified of the Candyman. Like, that was some serious stuff back in the day when it first came out. But like you said, as I got older and rewatched the first one and the second one, I'm not a, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of the third one. But the storyline that's there, mm-hmm. that it's more than just a, uh, you know, man killing people with a hook. There's actually a storyline there. Yeah. Yeah, really and um, that is what I love about those movies. You know, as a kid, you're watching it and you don't pick up on that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. not at all. Um, I'd say as a so kid. It, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, what I was going to say. So when you go back and watch them as a teenager or, or as an adult, you're like, "Oh, that's what's really going on." Mm-hmm. Yep. I was going to say, as as a kid, for those type of movies, Candyman probably included. I'm looking at it for the blood, guts, and boobs. Not that that's changed, but now <laughs> with like with like with Candyman, now that I'm an adult and I understand like race situations even more now, because you know, as a kid, you don't pay attention to any of that. You just play and have a good time. But now, like I said, I just rewatched this movie last week, and I was like, "This is a, it's a real powerful horror movie, like a really good oh, strong horror movie." And I feel like I don't remember if Jordan Peele's directing it or producing it, but him having his hands on it is really good because this is like right he's up. Producing, there. we actually have a female yeah. director. That's right, the fem- which I think is awesome. I think that's real awesome. It is, and it's just. Um, I I can't wait to see what they do with it. I really can't wait to see. This is like I think that it's actually um, there were things that were lost in translation with the first one, mm-hmm. and I hate to be that person, but I would like to say that I feel are going to be stronger and actually um, more meaningful in this translation. I feel I, I really do. Like just seeing the trailers um, for this. Um, I think that it's going to be a lot more meaningful and, and, and really have its full potential displayed that maybe was lost in the first film. And I love the first film. I love the first film. So I hate to be like, well, I already think, but I really do feel like they're going to be providing some things in this new one that are going to really be more, you know, beefy and, and, and like really be strong to the story and add to what there is with this urban legend and Mm -hmm. what we can do and provide for the, the fans and the culture and the community with this film and it's full potential. I agree with you with that. And I'll say also with, with that being said, like as deep as the story is, I feel they can get deeper. And I feel now the way horror is now for not every horror movie, but for a lot that are coming out now, they're getting more into the storytelling instead of just, the, the cool scene of the, the awesome kill. They're getting really into the story and then they'll give you that little, you know, then they'll give you that kill. And I, I think feel- that's what we're doing with our film too, Reunion from Hell. I, I want to bring it back and say that um, without giving too much away, I think that's exactly the same vein that we're going in with our film and our storytelling is it's going to do that same thing and maybe circle back and tell some stories and be more involved with, uh, you know, people's lives and, and subtext and things that we could, we could really get back and do a better job storytelling and giving people their platforms to, you know, give their individual storylines out in a film, but for the community's sake. Yeah, no, that's good though. And it's, it's the right time. Cause like I said, it's a lot more storytelling is going into these horror movies, which I think is a, a really good thing. Slasher is definitely my favorite hands down. I'm not going to lie. But it's what it's what I was brought up on. It's what I grew up on. It's what I know from a kid. But at the same time, I'm really getting into more of these ones with like a deeper story and a deeper meaning, and then just hiding in the woods and cutting somebody up, so to speak. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to do with this film. Like I said, all these characters, I don't want to say they're damaged. Some of them are damaged, but they all have a story. They all you know they all have some kind of story to tell Mm -hmm. in a way and um they were just all brought together as you know from junior high and high school and they stuck together and unfortunately with our lead character when he left town i think some of them still stayed in touch um 
but he refused to come back to town uh, because it was just too hard for him. Yeah. And, That's how I feel uh, about my hometown. And, you know, it was about also being forced back to go with our lead, in my opinion, um, being forced to go back to his hometown and mm. eventually facing down these demons that he has to deal with that he's never dealt with. Um, and I think that comes out in the story, I would say. Um, but yeah, I mean, to me, we have some great kills. Yes, I will say that much. We have some great kills in this movie, but to me, it was important to tell a story, not have the found footage films that we've had for years and the ghost stories and mm -hmm. you know, to have a real story there. Like I said, so you care about these characters or you see yourself in these characters. So when something does happen, you're that much more devastated. That's good. That's good. Although... I, I think that's awesome, but there, I do love how with I'll say with the slasher genre, how they have they have like the characters you can kind of relate to. They have the goofy character, and then they have that one character you just cannot stand. You're like, I cannot wait for this person. Something has to happen <laughs> to this person. Please die. Yeah, Please die. Pretty much. Like, yes. And a lot there's times where they make it like the furthest through the movie, and they might be like the last kill, and I'm like finally, oh, finally, yes. yes. And you. Oh yeah, it. spoiler. Spoiler alert, if nobody's seen it, and um, it's about 10 years ago, Sorority Row, the remake of House on Sorority Row, but uh, there was one particular character. I loved her, and I hated her at the same time, but I kept waiting. I was like, when is she going to die? You know she's going to die. And she didn't die. <laughs> she didn't die until like the last 15 minutes of the movie. So um, I know where you're coming from where they will push that character and push that character back where you almost believe they're not going to die. Because <laughs> yeah, you're waiting. Off. You're just waiting. You're like, please, please just do something. Kill them off. Yes. And you, it, it gets to the point where time, not you get a little mad. Like, why the hell is this person still here? Why are they still? Oh, okay. Good, good. They're good. They're good. <laughs> I was about to turn this movie off. <laughs> But to me, and it kind of sounds morbid, when they finally do get it, you're like, yes. Oh, yeah. It's such a relief. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's such a relief. Good payoff. It has to be a payoff. Mm -hmm. Especially when it's like when there's a character that you connect with that you really like that dies, especially when they die early because of that character you hate. And then I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Revenge. Exactly. Revenge. Yes. That's, that's my... That's my take on it, 100%. Oh, man. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Now, um, I will say another spoiler alert. Yeah. <sighs> the best experience I had in the theater other than Scream and Freddy versus Jason, that was just crazy when that movie came out. Um was when the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning came out. And, you know, a lot of people didn't like that movie, but I, I it. really, I did too. And um, I was thrown off. I was really thrown off at the end. That was the first time I had seen mm -hmm. the lead girl, the, supposed to be the final girl, get it. Uh, she gets killed, and I'm like, what did they just do? That, that, <laughs> that's not something that's normally done. Yeah. But um, in the theater, I can I mean, I can remember people screaming and hollering, and it was just fun. And that was, you know, what was that, 2005, 2006? I think so. I love like that, that, though. I love that camaraderie, especially when you're in the theater, like, I remember the one that I felt that way was for the Evil Dead remake. Oh, and man. And people were just oh. so happy, so screaming. Like, everyone was so positive. But, like, you know, a lot of times you go to the movies these days and you're, like, cringing because people are going to talk. But if it's, like, an environment where everyone's happy and they're, like, laughing and camaraderie, it's totally different. I so. Agree. That was the last time I had a really great experience at the theater and people were like, yeah. 
don't Evil, remember what year that was. Evil Dead remake might be an unpopular opinion, but I like that better than I like the original. I, I actually do too. It just it looked so amazing. It was just it was probably one of the best remakes that's ever been made in my opinion. That and I think Texas Chainsaw from O three. It's not better than mm-hmm. the original, but it's one of the better remakes that they've ever made. It's um, I love that movie too. It's they just did it so freaking well. And I had it to Well if you think through that movie. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just Well if you think oh, if ahead. you think about it going back Texas Chainsaw 03 was what started the remake craze. But it was like they got worse and worse and worse. Yeah, it was like, I love um, Arlie Ermey. I'm not going to lie. I love Arlie Ermey. So. <laughs> but, oh yeah, he was amazing in that movie. And in the, the, the prequel, you know, there was just something about him that was just, you, you were terrified of him. And, like, just yeah, him you were terrified of, of him. You were terrified of him, but thought he was hilarious at the same time. Exactly. He was so command. I love him as an actor, and I, I thought his contribution to the horror community was very important. It meant a lot to me. Like, I just, when I saw that, I was, like, sold. I was like, this is it. I don't care what else goes on. <laughs> He's going to really, like, be so commanding and amazing. He was. Like, you didn't even know. He had no pants on at one point. You're just like, oh, there he goes. He was amazing. I, <laughs> I got to turn a light on. I'm getting really dark in here, so hold it. Um, you know, 03 was, it was a really good year for horror. Um, if, you know, we had Freddy versus Jason that year, which people have wait, had at that time waited 10 years for. And I, I remember going in. Yeah, I remember going into the theater, and I was 16, going on 17 when that came out, Mm -hmm. and it was a sold-out show. It was open at night, sold out, and I remember me and my group of friends sat down, and on one side of the aisle we were in, somebody was dressed up as Jason, and on the other side, somebody was dressed up as Freddie, and I was like, if these two start fighting in here, I'm getting out. But people, yeah. that's awesome. people just went crazy with that movie. Um, we all wanted it so the, bad. Yeah, some of the dialogue in it was just was so funny, but at the same time, great. It was, I mean, that was a great movie. Um, but after 03, or I would say more after 05, 06, we started getting into the ghost movies. And I think they took that a little too far, in my opinion. The paranormals and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You know, it got to a point, even with Saw, which I loved the first one, it was something fresh. It was something new. Um, But they got to the point where every movie was the same thing. And they just made sequel after sequel. And, it just, I don't know, horror just kind of fell apart. I and feel that's like what it, I kind of hate. fresh for a while, too. Like, unless you were actually going full on, like, really deep independent, it was not fresh. Like, they weren't offering well, options. And they were really, I think it was, like you said, like a high point on starting to resell um, brands and resell the same ideas that had worked in the past. And so they were trying to capitalize on things that have worked previously Mm -hmm. and just give them like a slightly new spin, but like spin the same thing. Like you're doing your wash and you're dry and you're going, you're going through cycles. Like how many different cycles can you go through? And that's, I think that's you're on point saying that's where we were at for sure. Yeah. uh, And there, there was two movies that, that they were independent that came out around that time. And one was, uh, behind the mask. Uh, oh, the Leslie Rise Burton. of yeah. Leslie. Yeah. Great movie, but I would have never found it had it not been for the video store. Because we still had, yes, we still had video stores then. Um, and the other one, and I have to praise Adam Green, Hatchet. Oh, yeah. I really have to praise 
Adam Green for fresh that. Fresh franchise. Such a fresh franchise yeah. in the midst of, like, nothing. Like, mm-hmm. literally, very fresh. Super fresh. Yeah, yeah that, that was a really good franchise. Fun franchise for me. Um, I'm a big Kane Hodder fan, so anytime I see his name in something, I'm just going to watch it. Just be, I don't care what it is. I don't care if he's in the movie for two seconds. I'm going to watch it. And well, I love how that role was, like, made for him. I feel like he he really really deserved it. I know with the Freddy vs Jason thing, how upset and how hurt he was about how they did him, and that, and then the guy made the hatchet, move, which was a fan that made the movie, and then Kane accept you know he accepted the role, which I thought was, that, I was like that's freaking awesome. Mm-hmm. That's freaking awesome. I brought, and I every found single one of it, like every installment was amazing too. I thought every single one of them were great, like all of them, which is hard to say, especially an independent film to have like a whole franchise in each film, like in every installment be strong. It's very unheard of. And I thought that they were one of the ones that like ground broke that for sure. Yeah, they did great. They did a really good job with that. Well, you know, the funny story with with the weekend I met Felissa Rose for the first time was when uh, Victor Crawley was going on its across the United States tour. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Felissa was at that convention. It was in Nashville, Tennessee, and Kane was at that convention, and Adam Green. And I actually got to go watch the movie in the theater with them, which was amazing. I'll never forget that experience. That's so cool. Mm-hmm. That reminds me of I missed the I missed the screener for it. I don't know what I was doing, but um, the, the, it's called the Id with Amanda Wiss. And then yeah. before and um at Scaric, at this kind of go to out in, at Scaricon. And I met her twice. I remember I met her earlier that year. Her and I met Robert England out in up here in Albany. And the, the funny story with this is my wife and my brother, huge Freddy fans. I'm more of the Jason fan. About two or three months before this con in April, that was out here in Albany where Robert came to. My brother moved uh-huh. to Colorado. My brother and his wife, you know, and family moved to Colorado. Like they already planned on moving to Colorado. Like I want to say that February. So he was like, when he found out about the kind that he was going to be there, he was so mad. <laughs> he was so mad and upset and like complaining like every day. So, like his wife was like, he was he was like like a child. <laughs> but he was so upset about it. But he he I mean he ended up getting his autograph. Like he left his glove here with us and. My wife ended up making a shadow box for him with the glove and some other cool Freddy things to send to him. But when I was getting That's up amazing. that, yeah, it's awesome. I'll have to have him show share a picture in the group again. But I'd love was, to see that for sure. I'll definitely, I'll tell yes. him. But what was cool about that was um, we met Amanda Wiss and she was telling us about the id at the time. And I told her, I was like, I'm going to do the movie. I'm going to watch the movie. I'm going to do it on my podcast. And she, which I still have the video. I got to find it. But she said, welcome to Horror with Search 30 for me. I got to record her saying that for me. And then she said, can you just tell people to watch the it? I was like, yeah, of course. I did that all in the one little video, which, again, when I find it, I'll share it. But that was cool. And then a few months later, my wife and I went to the Scaricon, and we seen her again there, and we're talking to her. She remembered us from April, which was amazing. And we had watched – I didn't get to watch the it that, at that time, but we watched it that night. That Friday night, because we were there kind of Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we, and then that Saturday, we told her we watched it. And I was like, I'm going to do it on my podcast. And she was like, how can I hear that? So I was telling her about it. I gave her one of my cards, and then she gave me her, like, her email, which was freaking awesome. And it took, it took a little while, but me and my brother finally did it and sent her the email, and she was just so happy we did it and reviewed it and that we loved the movie, because it was, it was a good movie. It was, that was one of those yeah. movies. It was really different. That's one of those movies I think that got me into. I'm not gonna say out of the slasher genre because I've always loved slashers, but it got me just expanding my mind more because it was it wasn't a slasher. Yeah, it yeah. Was like something that screws with your mind, and I was like this intellectual. One. There you go. It was, yeah. it was like cool. psychological. For it sure. was a fun. It was crazy too. Though. It was. I was just like, wow. But and, was, well, you you know, one thing I found is some of these independent films. Are because they're made by fans for the fans mm-hmm. are so much better than what Hollywood is releasing. Um, that's one thing that I have found. Uh, you know, one movie that comes to mind 
is Terrifier. Yes! <laughs> um, Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Um, that was a movie that I just kept hearing about, kept hearing about, kept hearing about through Facebook and everything. I'm like, what is this movie? And it came to where you could buy it online. So I bought it. I was like, okay, I'm going to watch it. And I started watching it. And I mean, I have to say, Art the Clown is probably <laughs> the scariest villain in years. <laughs> and some of the stuff he does in that movie. <laughs> I it mean, I remember sitting. Like super traumatic. Yeah. I mean, there's one particular scene, and I'm sure everybody knows the scene we're talking about. Yes, that but I was kills of all time. I was, <laughs> I was like, did they really just do that? <laughs> they yeah. did it, and we're about to see what else they're gonna do. Like they're gonna, I think they're gonna get worse. We well, you know sequels always are worse, so I think they're gonna like really get worse. So I'm like, oh, what are we gonna do? <laughs> I know, I can't. Yeah. Wait for that. it, That's another one I can't wait for. <laughs> and two of our actresses, Felissa and Tamara, are both in Terrifier wow. too. So good. Cool thing about um, Felissa Rose being in that movie is uh, at this past con in October, my brother came out. Me, and my wife, and my brother went. He came out from Colorado, and because we're pod, because I have a podcast, we had I had to do, I had to be on panels. So I told my brother, I was like, "Look, when you come out here, we're gonna have to do some panels." He's like, "All right, okay, cool." And he got to, I was on other panels while he was doing them. He got to do the Sleepaway Camp panel, and he got to do the Terrifier panel. And the Terrifier panel is where they announced that uh, Felissa Rose was going to be there, like going to be in the movie. So that was oh, really cool. And That's amazing. I think my wife, I know my wife, yeah, my wife recorded both of those. And the night before was like the VIP part. It's like they let us know the night before. About the, you know that she was gonna be in the movie in the VIP part. Like, Just don't tell anybody. I was like, okay, cool. We'll be quiet. And we didn't. And they also showed us. I don't remember which one. I don't. Remember, I think it was the director, Damien. He yes. showed us the poster yeah. on his phone, like the poster for the for the new movie on his phone. I was like, that's so amazing. I cannot wait. Wow. But that's another reason why I love these this the horror community and why I love those cons because you get those experiences. Yeah. Exactly. One hundred percent. One hundred. I feel well, you know. I feel if you go to if you're someone who who does go to horror conventions, if you can afford to go and stay for the weekend, and you can afford to do the VIP party, definitely, definitely do it. Not just for the unlimited drinks for a couple hours, but just because you get to really like see these celebrities just kind of loosen up, relax. Yeah, you do, fun. and I I can I can attest 100 percent that it's true. Um, some people might oh, yeah. be um, apprehensive, but. I know 100% that if you go to the like the VIP parties and all that, they're going to be there. I'm yeah. there. I, I watch everything that happens. I'm there the whole night. And I can attest that they're going to be there and they're going to talk to you. They're going to interact. They're going to, you know, as long as you're respectful, obviously. But um, oh, yeah. so it's a real thing. Like the, the VIP parties and the passes, some people may be like, oh, well, what does that even mean? What is that going to get me? It's actually going to get you to be able to interact and, you know, respectfully have time with some people that you really look up to and mean a lot to in your life. Um, and it's me. Well, I mean, my friends, like basically I know that from behind the scenes that they are there 100% to make it a great experience mm -hmm. so that you have fun, that you feel involved, that you are interactive so like again like when you get these vip badges or like behind the scenes and stuff like that at the conventions i'm not just saying this i literally like i live it you can message me if i'm wrong but it's literally like it's there for you to have that experience and it's 100 percent you're going to get it if you choose to for yeah, sure it's the yeah most fun i've ever had at a con getting the vip just getting the vip thing because you got to do so much well for us it was mainly the, just the vip party because Again, I brought the podcast, so we're technically media, too. So we got to right, right. I know with the VIP. You can go in there early and kind of, you know, get in line early. But we got to go. We had to go in there early to set up when we were at our yeah. when we were okay. at our table. And the funny thing was, like, with the VIP, like, again, with the VIP pass, you get first in line. Me and my brother never took advantage of that. I don't know if we just forgot <laughs> or what the case may be. And then we did um, photo ops. We did one with Felicia Rose and one with David Howard Thornton, actually. 
and again, we could have been first in line. Like we were one of the first people in there, but we were just talking, just having a good time. And other people got in line before, didn't even care about it. So like yeah, my main for thing sure. for, for me, my main thing for VIP is just rubbing elbows with, with the stars when they're, when they're relaxing, when they're hanging out, having a few drinks and just kind of chilling versus being yeah, first yeah. in line. I don't care about being first in line. And again, I yeah, mean, you want the experience, like the full experience. You're yeah. just there for like the time for sure. Exactly. And then, like I said, I have to go there to set up anyway. So it's like I'm getting in there before VIP to set up and I go around. Like what we did was we, we scoped out the whole, me, him, and my wife, we scoped out the whole place, figured out where everybody was, where everybody was sitting, where all the cool vendors were, and then, you know, got to business after that. But it's just, it's one of those things. It's if for horror fans, I'll say it's one of those experiences you, you have to just try it at least one time in your life. And oh, for sure. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like the, the Lay's chips thing. Once you have one, you want more. Whatever, <laughs> whatever they say. I don't know the whole thing. You can't just have one, but that's exactly what the times are. <laughs> well, you know, so true. I can attest to all that. Um, the weekend that I first met Felissa, like I told you, they were doing the Victor Crawley tour, and um, Caroline Williams from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 was there, and Hatchet 3, and after the convention part that night, we all, me, Caroline Williams, Melissa Rose, um, Adam Green, and Sid Hag, may he rest in peace. He had some great stories, especially that night. We all, and Bill Mosley, we all hung out at the bar and just, you know, like normal people. Mm-hmm. And had drinks and just had a good time. Absolutely. Oh, and a word of advice, people, when you do go to these VIP things, eat more than just cookies and cupcakes at the VIP party because uh, that's what I did. And I was really, really drunk. Didn't realize it. But yeah, I didn't, <laughs> yeah. I didn't do anything bad or stupid, but it, it was just funny. Like we went back up to the room and my wife was like, "You." Got... <laughs> so we, we go back up to the room and stuff. And we're just hanging out watching movies or whatever. And my brother wakes up with candy wrappers all over him. She's like, you two are like <laughs> children. <laughs> What's wrong? She's like, I, I feel like I have to babysit. It does, you. it does go, it goes into children territory real fast. And it, um, oh, yeah. got to make sure you eat, but also make sure you hydrate. But we are there to have a good time. So we might, you know, get you up there to sing. We might get you up there to dance. We might get you up there to, you know, just have a heart to heart and just to spin. But um, a lot of times we won't get you on social media or like film and stuff like that. But it's a good time. But yeah, prepare because we're there to have a good time. Oh, it's it's such oh, yeah. a great freaking time. Who was it? Um, Jason Lively was drunk <laughs> and he was on our floor. And he, him and someone else were like running up and down the hallways, just knocking on people's doors. Right. <laughs> and I was I, I think I don't know if I just got out of the shower or what. But I, I, was, I, remember I was wearing my sweats. I didn't have a shirt on. I was talking to my brother. <laughs> I was like, I want to go out there. And mind you, you know, when you're drunk, you don't really make sense. I was like, I want to go out there, but I don't have a shirt on. And then I was like, and I don't want my wife to wake up and get mad at us for going out here acting crazy. And he was, he was like, yeah, he was like, that's probably a good idea. We should just stay in here so we don't get ourselves in trouble. <laughs> and, and I didn't know my wife was awake. Like, she wasn't saying anything. She was just kind of laying there. So the next day we're talking about it. And she was like, you fools could have just went out there and ran around or whatever. She was like, I don't. I know you guys weren't gonna get. In, you you know we weren't gonna do anything stupid. Aww, but we didn't want her to amazing. get mad. <laughs> so I was like, okay. I was like, well, next time we'll we will probably do that. <laughs> but it was just, it was I such a fun time. Yeah, that's so much. It was such. Yeah, a that's fun. one thing that I learned. Um, is once the nighttime hits and everybody starts having a good time, you never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> I know. That's when I and come out. I'm like the You never guy. know. Like, hey, guys. <laughs> you, you never know what you're going to see. You know what's funny, too, is like at cons, especially if you're there early because you got to set up or whatever, you're there all day. And then if you say for the VIP yeah, thing, for sure. you're there late for that. And it's like on a normal day, me being up, just say, doing stuff all day from 8 in the morning until, say, 1 o'clock in the morning, including the VIP stuff without like really taking a break without sitting down to eat you're exhausted yeah. and you want to go to but, but that atmosphere i had so much energy i didn't know what to do with myself so you I just, just want to be around your friend but also like you don't want it to end like 
Yeah, exactly. Every convention, I get depressed at the end of every convention. Every Sunday, I get really sad. It's hard to say goodbye. So it's like, especially Saturday nights, you want to last as long as it can because mm -hmm. you're like, this is like the peak. This is where I'm going to see all my friends. This is like our big time to shine or like, you know, our main time together. Yeah. So that's something that a lot of people may not understand about conventions too is like, well, it goes by so fast. Like people say you're lucky and you came in Thursday night. That's great. That's your chill night. But like by Friday, um, Friday nights, usually like the conventions close pretty late. So people don't get a chance to really hang out on Fridays. Mm -hmm. So your, your, your main night to really spend time together would be Saturday. Cause we close like probably about 7 PM would be average. Um, so you're looking at like, that's your main night to like, yep. we're going to dress up. Like a lot of us want to dress up. We want to wear costumes. We want to cosplay. We want to, you know, do something that's going to pay homage to our favorite horror films or want to just like dress up crazy or do like crazy makeup or whatever we want to do. Mm -hmm. um, we want to see our friends. So Saturday night is the main time to shine. And then Sunday it goes by like that. Cause it, like, the con doesn't even open till like, 10 11 a.m and then a lot of people have flights so you know you're looking at 3 to 5 p.m and people are gone and what are you gonna do and then you're waiting for the next one so people are emotional they're trying to buy things they're trying to mm -hmm. say goodbye so sunday is really a goodbye day it's like a lot of you know we're trying to have panels we're trying to have films we're trying to do things that keep people engaged but everyone keeps looking at the it's hard to not look at the negative side. Um, and I'm oh, hoping yeah. that when we all come out of this, we'll look at things a lot more positive and be like, well, every moment counts. So Sundays aren't as depressing. We still have a lot of time on Sunday, but it's very natural to say, hey, it's Sunday. Um, we're going to have to say goodbye. We're going to have to close down. We're going to have to do what we have to do. Yep. So yep. Saturday is really your main hurrah. Yeah. yeah exactly. You're right. you're right. And it's just, I try to make the best of the moment for the whole weekend but then like again like you're saying when you have to go on Sunday it's just like oh damn I gotta pack up now and it's cool you were what you were saying you can get the best deals on Sundays oh yeah yeah I yeah. will say do not always wait for that because oh no stuff will sell out like there's all my stuff usually sells out like I won't wait till Sunday for anything like, like if I see something I want um I will either like pay a down payment and have it held mm -hmm. or I'll just buy it like yep. That's nothing, nothing really waits for a Sunday, but it is a day when obviously people um, yeah. feel that, that end, you know, it, it goes by so quick. Three days aren't very long, especially I think a lot of people are realizing that now that three days are not very long in the sense of schemes. No, not at all. Not at all. And it's, it's funny because like with those cons, there's been, I keep picking myself for this. There was a Pamela Voorhees figure in the box. I think the box is a little bit dinged up. And I decided to keep walking around. I'm like, you know what? Let me come back for it. Was, I think it was like 80 or 90 bucks too, which isn't bad. And I'm walking around, walking around, walking around. And then I just start buying other stuff. I, I ended up spending the money I would have spent on that. And I, like after that weekend was over, I was like talking to my brother. I was like, you should have made me get that freaking figure. I was like, I don't know why I did not get that figure. So I told myself, and I say it to everybody, when, if you go to a con and you have the finances, of course, if there's something that you really want to get, especially if it's one of those figures, like a Pam of Warriors is hard to get, for a, especially for a good price. If it's something that's oh, really yeah. hard to get, really rare, and you can afford it, get it. <laughs> Just get it. Don't yeah, even say, hey, um, uh, I don't be honest, too. A lot of these vendors, they understand, like, you know, like, just be honest and say, hey, um, I don't have everything right now. I want to do a down payment and just do a down payment and talk to them. Be like, honestly, mm -hmm. you know, if maybe there's something we can work out at the end. If you don't sell it, like, don't say like, you're trying to be like, Hey, I just, you know, want this for a lower price. If, if it's really like your circumstances, just say, Hey, I really want this. Um, if I could pay a down payment, um, or do something just to, you know, put in yeah. line that you really want to buy this and you're serious. You're not trying to take advantage. You're not trying to like say that you want something for a lower price. Um, you know, it's all about the fans. So if it's not available, it's not available, but you can 
have that conversation before it even gets to Sunday and you don't have any options. If you really want it, talk about it. I mean, oh, yeah. we're all there for the same reasons. We're there because well, this is what we want in our lives. This is what we want. This is what we really love. And we, it means a lot to us. So sometimes things can be worked out. You never know. It's better than just being like, well, I can't do this and then just giving it up or I can't do this. And maybe it never got sold. And then you missed out on something that, you know, this vendor doesn't have sold and you could have supported them in a better way for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like I, when I do want something, I, w- I will try anytime to make a deal just because I know they don't want to take it back home. So Sundays are definitely the best days to do that. But there are, there are times where they're like, yeah, I could, I can knock a couple of dollars off or whatever, five, 10 bucks, which is great for me. Cause you'll have like, I'll go there. I'll have more than enough money. I'm like, okay, if I can get this for say 80 instead of 95, cool. I will still pay the 95 if I have to, but I'm not going to let them know. It's kind of like when you buy a car or something, you don't, you don't want to let them know that you're going to pay that price. It's not, but at the same time, it's like, if I have to, if I have to feel, if I feel I have to get this, I will. But I do want to try to make a, a decent deal for myself because I get yeah, it. Yeah, you want it to benefit everybody. You want yeah. it to benefit what you want it to benefit what you can afford as a fan, and you also want to benefit what they need for you to provide for them as a vendor because this is their livelihood too, and they're exactly. providing you with something that you can't just get anywhere. So exactly. it, it's something that's it's to be taken very, you know, strongly because they're giving you something that not everybody can provide but Mm -hmm. at the same time if it's not you know something you can do maybe you guys could have the discussion because everybody wants to benefit and you know keep the circle of fans going and keep everybody strong and happy um it's the main event but it also has to be a livelihood and something that's taken very seriously oh no no that that i do understand but i i do know like with a lot of vendors, I'm sure in the back of their minds with some of them, they're probably like, okay, I will, I'm going to market for this just in case somebody just comes and buys it. But in the back of my head, I will take, you know, $15, whatever the case may be, I will take this for it. It's, there's nothing right. wrong with just going to ask. And if they say no, yeah, cool. well, if, if they, if yeah, you ask, cool. it's great to have that. Di- the, having the dialogue is everything. Like yeah. if you guys can just talk, like, I think that's really important to just be able to talk about anything, especially mm-hmm. at the conventions and in the, community is just having that dialogue and being able to be open enough to be like hey what do you think like is this a possibility this is something that means a lot to me and what can you do to make your life easier because you're actually like you know you always want the community to go forward and be in like a circle where we're comp- like we're continually like feeding back in we're giving something mm-hmm. back over and over again to like keep the circle strong i agree i agree <laughs> Yeah, I agree 100%. And one thing I've learned about the vendors is that you're going to get better deals, like you said, about a Pamela Voorhees figure than you are ever going to get on eBay. Yeah. Ever going to get on eBay. Like I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm really still kicking myself and mad at myself about that because the figure was like 80 or 90 bucks. And now – You'll get something more direct thing, too. That same you'll figure I look at – Yeah, you have to, you'll get something way more direct for sure. And that's that's one hundred percent my fault because I had the money. I could have just went and grabbed it and bought it and just put it away. But nope, I had to keep walking around and looking at other stuff. Bought a bunch of other stuff. And the sad thing is, I'm sure I bought cool things, but I don't remember what I got. <laughs> I do. I remember what I did not get. But that's did, a convention. This past con though, <laughs> there was a um, Nightmare on Elm Street car that my brother got, and there was one left. And he came over and told me and my wife. And my wife was like, "We got to get it." And there was a Christine car, one left. I was like, I'm getting, I was like, I got to get them both. As soon as I got those, not even, because there was a guy that did the, made the same mistake I did. He was looking at the cars. I think the Nightmare Elm Street car. And he was like, you know, let me think about it. Let me walk around for a little while. And this, he left. And that's when my brother had come, came over, like, after he bought the car. So, like, you know what? Let's just get it. <laughs> it was the last one. I had to get it. And the guy came back, like, five, ten minutes later. And he was like, I, sh- he was like, I should have got it. Like, as I'm, as I'm paying for the cars, he's like, I was... Because I was just coming to, you know, I decided to come get it, but it was it was too late. But it's con life, I guess. It happens. That's, that's how it happens for sure. You wait, and you're just like, oh, no, what did I do? Yep. Ah, and I'm just, yep. There was those two, and then I got a, um, my wife got me a Friday the 13th from Part 7, which is my favorite one figure. It's the tall one, like the 18-inch figure. 
And this guy was selling them. He had them all on his table. They were out of the box, but everything was 100% complete. Nothing wrong with them at all. And he had like a few Jasons, a few Michaels. And the first figure I seen was a Jason one, but it wasn't seven. I was looking at it. I was like, yeah, you know what? I'll get this one. And I seen seven. I was like, you know what? Nope. This one right here. It's the same price. Yeah. I'm getting it now. I, I could not. I didn't I didn't even try to ask for a deal or anything. I was like, I, I no, I got to get it now. I had to get it. And I, I paid 100 for it. Looking online in box, it was like going for three hundred plus, four hundred plus on eBay. So I'm like, oh, wow, I'm happy, yeah. happy with it. The detail is amazing on it. I again, if you can afford pe- if people, if you can afford to get certain things from these cons, grab it that day. Especially if it's like a figure you know or something that's rare, that's hard to get, hard to come by, and crazy price on eBay. Get it. Don't make the same mistake I did. Learn from me. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny you said something about Friday the 13th Part 7 because, you know, that was Kane's first one. But also, that's one of my favorite ones. A lot of people give it crap, but Mm -hmm. I like that they did something different, you know, with that one. And the fact that, you know, Jason had an adversary, you know, he had an adversary in Tommy and the final chapter, but. Tina was a pretty badass adversary. I loved her. I thought she was amazing. Really did. She was. Yeah. I actually, I was on a panel with, I don't remember everybody's name from the movie, Tina, which was Lara Park Lincoln. Yep. Um, Bad News Cruise. I forgot his first name. Uh, Terry, I think. Terry Kaiser. There you go. And then the guy, I think his real name is Kevin. He Kevin was Blair. Team. Him. I was on a panel with those three at a con a couple of years ago. So that that's what bumped it up to my favorite Friday the thirteenth movie. It was my second favorite. But that right there bumped it up to that. And it was just being on that's another thing that's cool about this podcast, like when I go to these cons, is being on those panels. Like not I'm not always on there with the celebrities, but just being on a panel in general. Never thought I'd be on a panel before. And I remember the very first time I was on a panel, I was just like, Oh damn, what am what am I gonna do? I had a couple friends up there with me, so it was easy. It was easier. And then now I just, I, it's at the point that I can't wait to be on another one. I cannot wait to be on another one because it was so much fun. I threw my brother to the wolves. Like I was telling you guys how he was on the sleep <laughs> one and it's terrifying because he's never been on a panel at all. And then he's, I'm not gonna say he's not good at public speaking because he's decent. He's pretty good at it, but he's, he doesn't like it. Like he gets nervous with it a little bit, but he did really good with both of those and just, we were on a couple panels together before that, but then he just, he had to do it. And he, he thanked me for it. He's like, thank you. I appreciate it. I was like, of course. Cause I'm, I was like, I'm on this. I was on like a, um, at the time for one of them, I was on like a podcasting panel, like, you know, how to start a podcast or a horror podcast. I forgot what it was exactly. But I was like, that's, this is, you know, it's my podcast anyway. That's more of my expertise. Go ahead and just enjoy that. And, and I had to do it to him cause I knew he'd be nervous. So, you know, you you have to just throw them out. Go ahead, you got it. <laughs> well, yeah, since we're talking about conventions, I'll kind of go into our perk thing that we have a deal on uh, because you know, um, you can right now get two personalized autographs from Tamra and two personalized autographs from Felissa. That's four total. For a total of sixty dollars, that's not bad. Especially with what you pay for just one at a convention, sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I did want to throw that out there because I know I had a lot of people ask, you know, are y'all going to do something special with Felissa and Tamara? When we have some other great um, perks with them, but that one I'm really proud of um, because I know. You know, you go to conventions and, you know, you, you spend, what, $40 for one autograph, sometimes higher. Mm-hmm. So to get four from two of, you know, horror celebrities, that's a great price. Oh, yeah, it is. That's a really good price. And um, we could wrap it up in the next couple of minutes, five, ten minutes. But I was going to ask you, what other what other Indiegogo perks do you have? Uh, well, we have, we have, um, of course, you know, we start out with the personal thank yous, um, shout outs, uh, 
And then we go up to the chances to be in the movie yeah. with um, want it posters. And actually the want it poster sold out. That one sold out in over, um, no, the missing posters. I'm sorry. The missing poster sold out in less than 12 hours. Oh. Um, so, and then you have a chance to get a digital copy of the film, which mm-hmm. is something that, you know, is before we even get the DVDs ready. Um, then you get a chance to get the DVDs, Blu-rays, and it, I mean, it goes up from yeah. signed posters by the cast, uh, signed, uh, scripts, mm-hmm. signed DVDs and Blu-rays. And I mean, it goes all the way up to an actual chance to be in the scene with Tamara. And then from there, it goes up to, which is our highest one, you get an executive producer credit, and you get to have dinner with Felissa Rose and Tamara Glenn. That's awesome. Yeah, that's some really, really cool perks that I know fans will. Especially once this, you know, corona stuff is done and people are back on their feet and doing what they, they can do. They're definitely going to be eating these perks up. I think there's some really good, really cool perks. And as I was saying earlier, that's one that's one big thing that gets me back in these movies, besides the fact that I'm a big horror fan and I love the indie scene, is it's the perks because it makes us all, as fans, feel really, really, really included in the movie because, you know, we get to help get the movie out there, in a sense. And I just love it. I respect you guys for it. I, I'm humbled by it. I just... Thank you guys for doing awesome stuff like that for us fans. Well, the fans are what's important. Um, and we're coming up with new perks all the time. Julianne probably can't keep up with it because I'm always coming up with, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> but that's why I wanted to put it out there when we made that official statement that filming had been pushed back, that if you could not donate at this time, we would be running another campaign for people that wanted to and just could not it's hard to keep up these days too because we know that sometimes like even i personally it's like it's hard to be online every day i try to do it because i want to provide entertainment and like you know some funny things or you know some kind of inspiration or just like an update on something i really believe in i don't want to get lost in the shuffle Mm-hmm. But it's hard these days. Some people don't want to look at social media. They they literally don't. They don't want to look at it. They can't look at it. They don't want to log in. It's it's just, you know, it's very hard to like look at your feed. Even if you do log into your page, yeah. it's hard to lo- log into your feed and see all these things that are in your feed, like all the news and stuff like that. So it's hard to get through and be like, you know, we're just providing entertainment. We want to keep you you know, happy, want to keep you motivated and focused on good things to come. Mm -hmm. Um, Some people can't look at that right now. And that's understandable. Like you, you're, you're, you're wondering where you're going to get food. You're wondering about your rent and where you're going to live. Are you going to be sick? You know, like your family, are they going to, so there's really, really heavy things going on. So, um, and nobody wants to downplay that. Like we are all experiencing, it's really freaking hard. And well, some of us, yes. that just, we, we play dress up to like escape it. Like, mm. so, but everybody acts differently. You know, I, I may put on some makeup and stuff because I want to pretend like today's normal, but maybe some people don't do that. You know what I mean? Like it, it's it, everybody, it's very personal. It's a very personal time for sure. Exactly. And I think that's why we're all reaching out for something because we this is like she said it's a very personal time and I I have to honestly give a shout out to Noelle Berger and Rob Mahoney because they have helped so much in promoting this movie they're our little street team and um, you know I want people to be excited and look forward to the fact that Once this is over, and it will be over, Mm -hmm. a great horror, slasher, thriller, I don't want to say psychological. Would you say that, Julianne? I would say 
for sure. I would. Uh, it's psychological, because it does play with your mind some. Movie but is it, coming. Well, it, it also, like, it also um, taps into um, people personally um, and kind of plays with their their background and stuff. I think that's where it would tie into psychological. But it's not really yeah. like a mind game, but it would make them feel tapped into for that reason. Well, it's a mind game and who's doing this. Oh, yeah, for sure. That part, yeah. <laughs> there you go again with the teases. <laughs> yeah, we can't. I mean, it, it could very well. <laughs> you know, it could be anybody. So that's that's the fun part. It could be anybody. So that's all I can give on that end of who could possibly be the killer or killers or, you know. Mm-hmm. Killers. I love I, how you put that plural because, yeah, I could totally. I don't, I don't you know never you. know. Someone asked me the other day, like, are you the killer? I'm like, I don't even know if I'm the killer. I have literally no idea. Be really ashamed of myself if I was, but I don't know. I could be involved. Yeah, I mean, you never know who it is or what their particular motive is. Very true. I guess we can kind of wrap this one up, though. This was a great freaking time. Thank you both. You got to do a group photo. Time. You got to do that little group photo. Oh, I sent it to you. Yeah. Oh, you did earlier. Okay. Yeah, I sent it to you through um, Messenger. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I haven't had checks. Like, I haven't a chance to see that stuff. So. Oh, yeah. oh, no problem. But uh, immortalize us all, even more <laughs> so. Our screenshots. Hey, I, I'm I'm with it. But seriously though, thank you both for coming on. I greatly, greatly thank appreciate you. it. And Thanks I'd love to have you both on again, whenever. Yes. Thank you for inviting us. When you, when I found out that you had invited me, I reached out to Julianne because I was like, I have to have Julianne on this. Oh, um, I love you. Thank you. <laughs> I just, I had to have her on this. But we are both, and I know everybody from the cast and crew is appreciative of you and other podcasters that let us come on your shows and talk about, you know, horror movies, talk about our movie and just have a good time. Absolutely. For sure. 100%. That's what I feel like that's what, well, I'll speak for my own podcast. That's what this show is for is just talking horror, having a great time. And it's an open invitation for you two to come back and anybody involved in this movie to come on and promote the movie and talk some horror and all that fun stuff that we got to do. We like, have amazing well, people. We'll send them your way for sure. Please do. But yes. Please do. Especially with this. Yes, and- I have nothing but I feel like I have nothing but time. I've been recording since like last Thursday. From last Thursday up till this Saturday, I think I have like 13 or 14 shows that were scheduled that I either did or I'm going to be doing. So I'm just trying to stay busy <laughs> and have I have, something I enjoy. <laughs> Exactly. That's all we have right now is time, and we've got to do stuff that we enjoy. I feel the best you. we can. I I really feel that one hundred percent for sure. I I have the same feelings on that. I have a bunch of things that I'm trying to do too. Um, my thing is that I get anxiety and like you know get stuck. But I, this is what keeps me moving. Mm-hmm. Um, getting over those boulders of being like I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I can't process. You know. Mm-hmm. You get that anxiety because I know a lot of people right now are having problems, especially if you have anxiety and depression to begin with. Um, this is one thing that keeps me getting over that little hump is like, okay, I have to do this. So here's my list. You know, you keep focused and you do something that's going to move you forward. It's really oh, important definitely. for sure. Definitely. Yes. And uh, that was one of the reasons it was so important to me that we run a perk, like I said, that $3 of that perk is going to be donated to the Coronavirus Foundation, and that perk will drop tomorrow. But it was very important for me to give back. Mm -hmm. Um, It's it's just very important to me because people give to us, and, you know, I want to give back to the community. I want to give back to people that are sick and uh, you know i just want to help any way that i can 
Well, a lot of our community is displaced right now. I think that like, I would, I would say, I, I beg to differ, but a hundred percent of our community is um, displaced right now. Like all of the independent film community, um, no matter where their backgrounds are, um, we're all on hold. Like all the projects are on hold. Um, all of their livelihoods are on hold. Their families, their loved ones, like everything's in limbo right now. And it's all, you know, very scary and, and very like, horrific right now we're living in a real life horror show and i think that especially this community is, is rooted in um having freedoms that maybe a lot of people aren't used to mm -hmm. um and things we do aren't very normal to other folks so we have none of that right now this whole community is at a deadlock right now we're stuck and i've been saying this on anyone i've talked to is none of my projects have anything right now. We, we're all stuck. There's nobody that's had an advantage. We're all in the same boat. And if we've ever been before, it's literally, we need right now just like support mentally and, and verbally and just love for one another. If that's one thing that you can do is really keep these projects alive and these people alive that are doing the same thing as you. We're creating, we're, we're giving birth to ideas and entertainment that is with you in mind first and foremost and it if you can't do anything financially it's because we're all in the same freaking boat so it's mm -hmm. kind of like we all have to be at least each other's anchors as far as keeping morale alive i agree exactly i agree do you guys want to plug anything are you good plug yes any, your uh, I'm your medias <laughs> My amazing hair. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm good. Okay. You want to plug anything? You, you, you right here, first and foremost, you. We would like to plug yes. and give love to you and what you do for the community right now. What you're doing every day by bringing people on and talking and keeping spirits up, for sure. Thank you. <clears throat> and again, exactly. I'll say you guys go check out this project. Go on Facebook, whatever. Are you guys on Instagram too? Yeah, I'm uh, Julian. Yeah. Find them on Instagram. Find them on Facebook, YouTube, anywhere you can figure, find this movie. Find it. Back it when you can. Hayden, what is our tag on IG? What is our tag on Instagram? It's uh, it's actually at reunion from hell. Okay, so people because. Instagram's a different uh, beast of burden there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have somebody. Uh, I'm running the Facebook, and then I have somebody running our Twitter. We are on Twitter. Then I have somebody else running our Instagrams. <laughs> so we're all going back and forth. Because I will tell you, I do not know anything about Twitter or Instagram. I, don't I know, know Facebook. Twitter, for sure. So uh, we are out there in every possible way we can be. We have the group, which is so much fun because you can come in, you can talk with other fans, you can talk with the cast, and we do respond to you. And uh, then we have the official Facebook page um, that we keep up. So we have many ways for the fans to come and check out what we're doing you know one thing that i've been doing is um that was really important to me too was i've had several one sheets made that way everybody in the cast can be at least on one one sheet so, so um because i wanted the cast to feel included too mm -hmm. and uh you, you know we have the one one sheet that has julianne is actually on everyone, everyone. Um, but she is the leading female of this movie. And then we have one that has Tamara and Felissa and Max. And then we have one that has some of our other actors. And then we're going to have another one that has the rest of the actors on it. So you eventually you can choose which one sheet you won't find. That's awesome. That's awesome. Amazing. That's cool. But I think that we should also have, this is just my like live 
um, idea for maybe, um, I think a lot of times with um, right now, it's very difficult. I think with our group, something that we could do is again, be more interactive. We could come up like we were talking about earlier with ways to get people involved. Like again, like what's your favorite scary movie and then have the trailers or what's your yeah. favorite scary, you know, something where like somebody like a cast member comes on or a crew member comes on and like every, maybe like once a week, twice a week, we do something that interacts people with talking about what got them into horror. What are their favorite scary movies, especially like nineties related or something pertinent to the mm -hmm. film or, or things they would like to see in the film, like, or come up with a kill. Like maybe they could come up with like, what is your ideal kill? You know, cause people are like really, you know, I don't, I don't want to say bored. I hate using that word, but people are, are, are starved for, creative outlets right now. So maybe we could do yeah. more like that in the group and we could help people do that too. I think I agree. Awesome. I really, all that's an awesome idea. Just to, again, cause you'd be more interactive with the fans, which again, as a fan, I love that kind of stuff. And it just, it gets people's minds just out of the negativity that's going on right now, including you guys as well. It just kind of frees up your mind for a little while, get a couple of laughs or whatever the case may be. Yeah. But I exactly I can't wait to see this project. And again, Thanks. thank you guys so much for going on. Thank Can you guys you. just stay put for a couple?